The Denver Nuggets last night lost to the Suns 117-107 in overtime. Uh, Kevin Durant went off for 35 points, 8 boards. Jamal Murray was dynamite in that game. But the Nuggets have been kind of this roller coaster this year. And I think it's an interesting question on where's our trust level with the Nuggets? Because last year, they just hovered at the top of the Western Conference all season long. Yeah. And from start to finish, it was like, whoa, okay, are they going to stay healthy? Are they going to have Jamal Murray? Is this what we're seeing from this year's Nuggets team? Slow start, kind of shaking off the rust stuff of partying all summer long after winning a championship. And I think we forget what a toll going to the NBA Finals takes on a team the next season because of how you play till June. Middle of June. Middle of June. And then you just fire it back up two months later at the end of September when you have to go back and, and start training camp again. Yeah, there's this there's this belief in the NBA in particular where it's like, it's all you just gotta, you gotta manage the regular season. You gotta manage the regular season because it's all about the playoffs. The rings culture we were talking about with college football as well. And I hate it because... It cheapens it for fans. It cheapens it for players that the 82 doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And I think you're seeing a bit of that here with the Nuggets. Last year, final three weeks of the season, they, they, they coasted. They rested. They had it locked up. It's different this year. They don't have it locked up. Seeding is going to be an important factor, like especially for Denver. Denver has the best home court advantage in all of basketball. It has nothing to do with their fans. It has everything to do with their elevation. It takes 72 hours at minimum to get adjusted to it. It is a built-in advantage. It matters to them. It's going to be interesting to see how much they fight for that. But they, while they are mostly the same team, the loss of Bruce Brown, while he hasn't been that impactful for other teams, how impactful he was for this team is a real thing. Christian Brown, the second-year player from Kansas, and this year Peyton Watson from UCLA, have been very helpful. And they're going to be very good role players in two and three years. Like, they're going to be stud role players, I think, in, in my opinion. But there's a lot more variance in them. And Jamal Murray's injuries, his shin splints, are proving to be problematic. And the way things, the way the West is, it's very difficult night in, night out to match like for like. Say what you want about the Suns, but the reason they traded for Yusuf Nurkic was to have a 300 pound, seven footer who could bang the living hell out of Jokic. And last night, it, we saw... Uh, that game was bananas. I, I was following along... Nuggets were running away. On, ...on social media. I was just following along with the game. But you saw, in the fourth quarter, it was absolute meltdown by the Phoenix Suns, who, they're the worst team... This is The Phoenix Suns are the worst team in the NBA in the fourth quarter. Yes, um, like over the course of this season, they are the worst performing team offensively and defensively combined metrics in the fourth quarter of games. Yet they are three and0 in overtime games. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll turn it on and win. <laughs> and that's what you saw last night. Uh, Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, they go off and they, uh, I think both of them outscored individually the entire nuggets roster in that overtime period. I think he had eight points from KD, five from Booker. And they ended up uh, outscoring Denver fifteen to five in overtime. But this Suns team is kind of we're starting to see everybody builds to beat the best team in your conference, right? You 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 condition your roster like divisions are gone in the NBA where they don't even matter. So you're just kind of jockeying for that position. All right, who who's the team that we need to worry about? And when you say the Suns go out and they get Nurk and they wanted that three hundred pounder, you need somebody to jostle Jokic on the block. Mm -hmm. And he did that. He fouled out last night, but they end up winning the basketball game. The important thing is when you look at it, Yusuf Nurkic in 30 minutes, plus nine. Nikola Jokic in 44 minutes, minus 13. Now, so, individual game plus minus doesn't mean anything, but it, that right there, that's your indicator. That's, that's the difference in the game. But here's the thing that I believe in so much. In it, it, with the Denver Nuggets, it is so important. Michael Malone in a seven-game series is really damn good. And I believe mm -hmm. Jokic 
is just too much over seven games. We saw that. I mean, in what they did, we it's kind of funny that you mentioned how Nurk just yesterday. You mentioned how Nurk got pissy over the fact that he had to play one on one against Jokic, and it in and that was kind of one of the fractures of the Blazers in that playoff series in 2021. Well, now here we are. That's exactly what they did. And Frank Vogel threw him out there and said, go get him. And Nurk sucked it up. And, he and did. guess what happened? But w- can you sustain that over, over a seven-game seven series? series? And that's where I say, yeah. as much as we k- we want to sit there and question Denver, do they have that same oomph this year? You have Nikola Jokic, and you have a seven-game series. And you'll be he will prevail over whatever you're going to throw at him because of his ability not just to score but to pass the ball as well. And that's the thing is that, you know, he's the tried and true two-time MVP, world champion, finals MVP, all those things. And that's what he's supposed to be doing is to overcome that. But this is, this is again, for the Suns, this is why you go out and you get Nurk as you get the opportunity not to win that, to slow it down, to make – to make the Nuggets play a style that they don't necessarily – not that they don't want to play, it's just not their preferred style. And what what teams can give them the, those fits, though? Because I look at – I think the Clippers sitting at, at the with, four seed, they Zubats. can give them those fits with, yeah. with Zubats. And then you also have Kawhi Leonard in his length and mm-hmm. his ability to help. And, you, and then they have on-ball defenders that yeah. they, they can trust on Jamal Murray, too. Yeah, and that's the thing is – the flip side of that is, is like – the Nuggets have wings, again, like Christian Brown and Michael Porter Jr. and Peyton Watson, but the difference in trade-off there is pretty substantial, and I don't know if you want all those kind of support wings on the on the court for 25 to 30 minutes a night in the playoffs. But we're, we're sitting there and we're talking about this. Okay. OKC okay, doesn't have... I mean, we can love Chet all we want, but... Their size is going to be that's, an issue. And the thing is, they have to avoid the Lakers and the Nuggets in the playoffs until they get some sort of size. Or they have to dictate so over the top, spread the floor so much. And this is where everybody talks about wanting to chase the Warriors for years. Spread the floor, shooters, da 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 Yeah, that works when you have, A, the greatest shooter of all time. B, maybe the third, fourth, or fifth best shooter of all time in Clay Thompson. And then later on, the best individual score in the history of the game. Yeah, you can spread the floor, and it doesn't matter what you do. You can play, quote-unquote, small ball, and there's no amount of punishing them that you can do unless you have maybe Prime Shaq, Prime Duncan, Prime Akeem, one one of the best interior scores the game has ever seen. That's the only way you're going to break that. I don't know if that exists. Like, right now, the Celtics are bombing from three. Just They're, they're, they're doing stuff as a team that they just spread you out and they annihilate you. Even I don't think they do enough of that to get Denver to go away from what they do. So we've just named like two teams that were saying, yeah, they could give them problems. Mm -hmm. Carl Anthony Towns in the playoffs. We we're at the point where we have to believe it when we see it. But also, if you talk to any like any of the Nuggets or any of the people that cover the Nuggets, the team that gave them the biggest fits last year on their way were the Timberwolves because they do have legitimate size. I don't think that like, even though they have Jonas Valanciunas, uh, New Orleans the trust factor I, yeah. is zero. Um, in that, just that it factor. I think if you go down the list of of teams also in the West, I don't think the King the Kings would be a fun series to watch. I still don't. I still don't believe it. Dallas, Luca's terrifying. Luca is terrifying. Well, that's the thing is, remember he, just gravity around him. But can and you, they do have, they did go out and get Gafford. They, they they have size at the so trade deadline. Yeah, they've got PJ Washington, and then they've they've got their rookie Derek Lively. It's Every, you know everybody else. You're just squinting at and saying, "I could see it, I could see it," and that's yeah. why my belief in Denver is still there. It's still there, but it's not as rock solid, I think, as it was, which is kind of insane to think about because Jokic is still the best yeah. player on the planet. Yeah. So ultimately, really you're like th- these playoffs. I think, and this is not unusual. It's going to come down to health. As they always do. I mean, champ- championship is injury luck, and that's basically what we see time and time again every single year. Um, 503-864-6326, that's the Vancouver Ford text line. This text says, I hate it when it comes to playoff basketball. Everything seems like it's the best of seven. I'd rather see them go best of three, best of five, best of seven. Go escalate, and they did that. They did that, and people didn't like it <laughs> because here's the thing in why the NBA wants to go to those seven-game series, right? 
it's because greatness rises to the top in seven game series. That that's where you see greatness rise to the yeah, top. Yeah, that's the thing is that's is, why the NCAA tournament is what it is, is the one and done allows for so much volatility. You get what, caught in the chin one time yep. and you're out. Then that three game series, that's Which where you what, go. I'd don't like want, to see the first round go to five. Yeah, I, I would go back, but, revert. Back. Yes, and I, they won't because but, they they want they want the money. But that's what the NBA wanted, though. Yes. Is like they you want your stars to advance in seven game series. Your stars will have yeah. a better opportunity to advance. Wasn't that what kind of caused them to go to the seven round yeah. or yeah. seven game because yes. uh, uh, what Dikembe and the Nuggets beating the Sonics? Yep, yep. You had the upsets, and but that's the thing is like you Which get. I those, think that was the first time an eight beat a one. Yeah, that's the thing is you get those upsets though. Remember you you yep. you had the We Believe Warriors. Yeah. They want the stronger teams yeah. to yeah. to advance. But um, I I mean I think it's better for the sport when they don't. Think, yeah. think about all. Think yeah. about the, the the Joe Flacco Ravens run. Cinderella story. Think think about how it's still talked about and the coverage that got. It's you know, just, it I is just what appreciate it is. you didn't say Eli. All right, hey, guess what? Hey, they remember the Giants when they uh, broke off the Patriots undefeated season? Yeah, I do. I yeah. do. I do. Were, Actually, I don't remember that night. Was that was that a, were they were fifth seed? Blacked out a little bit, huh? I'd like to thank Gary from the Oak Tree for that. <laughs> <laughs> were they where were, wild card team? You think, thank yeah. Jack Daniel too. Yeah. No, Mr. Jaeger Meister. Oh, ooh, <laughs> Mr. Yes. Mr. Meister. The master hunter. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Hunt yeah. your liver. Yeah, Gary uh, Gary at the Oak Tree. He was a uh, good friend of mine, mm. owner of the bar, and a big Giants fan. Oof. And after he... Was he gl- gentle? No. After he <laughs> gloated in my face, <laughs> it is the first and only time that he, he said one, two words, I feel bad. It, that's the first thing he said. And here's a drink on me. And I may have milked that for a few more. And <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do. Like the only times. Never no freebies. Speaking with back to the Bills real quick, they just released Tredavious White. There we go. And that that move is coming. Yeah. Two years in a row, big injuries. They're just gonna it's a bloodletting in, in Buffalo right now. It's another six million free. And, so they've dumped almost twenty million in the past twenty minutes. Crazy. 